Well, good evening, Emmanuel Light of the World. I'm Pastor Rakia Wright, and I'm truly excited um, for just another week to come before you guys for Believers Night. I mean, we've been having an awesome, awesome time. If you've missed the last three or four messages that we've been speaking on in this area of healing and deliverance, you have missed out. So what I want you to do after you listen to this video, I want you to go back to our previous videos and check those videos out um, in this area of healing and deliverance. I'm telling you, it's going to bless you. It's going to give you great insight and understanding um, in this area. Last week, guys, we talked about um, the gateways to um, demonic activities in our lives. We, we just hit on it just a little bit. And so today we're gonna talk about how, um, how people create those opportunities and even how demons enter people. So we're gonna continue with that. And I'm gonna give you a list of different ways along with scripture um, on how this actually happens. Because you know we have to have that understanding as believers. The scripture says that those who believe will be able to cast out demons, right? And a slew of other things. And so we wanna make sure that we um, know and understand um, this area so that we know what we're dealing with and we know how to cast those things out and we understand the authority that we have in Christ Jesus to actually do that, amen? So make sure you have your Bibles, make sure you have a pen and pad, um, because we're going to be writing down lots of scriptures that I'm going to challenge you to go back and actually listen, um, read and meditate upon these scriptures. Amen. And so as you're getting those things, we're going to go ahead and open up in prayer and get right into it this evening. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to be able to come before your, your presence, to be able to come before your table and eat of your word today, Father. We don't wanna be ignorant believers, but we wanna be believers who have an understanding of what we're dealing with, even in the spirit realm. So I thank you for each and every person that is gathered on the other end of this screen. I pray, Father, that God, that ears are open, that hearts are tender and receptive, and that we are able to receive and to see in your scripture clearly what you are speaking in regards to this area of healing and deliverance. And Father God, I thank you that we will rise up in our spiritual authority and that we would use that authority to cast down devils, cast down evil spirits, and that we would have an understanding and a knowing of how these uh, demonic spirits enter. So Father God, I thank you for the boldness that is even being deposited on the inside of each and every person that is listening um, this evening, Father God, that we would no longer walk in fear, that we would no longer walk in intimidation. But Father God, I thank you that this apostolic anointing, Lord God, is coming to the forefront and that we're walking in this anointing. Father, we give you praise. We say, have your way in this time. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Amen. So like I said, guys, we are going to be tackling lots of scripture. Now, I'm not going to be reading all of the scripture um, this evening, but I am going to give it to you so that you'll have it to go back in reference, okay? So like I said, last week we talked about um, de how demons enter through spiritual gateways and um, how we should not give the devil a foothold. We referenced the scripture Ephesians 4 and 27 that says, do not give place to an evil spirit. And we talked about how that place is a opportunity is a legal foothold, is a legal right that we give to evil spirits to actually enter and occupy um, that area, right, in those, those areas of our lives. And so we talked last week about how demons enter through generational um, sin and through uh, sins of our ancestors. So we talked about that and how we have to identify those cycles of sins in our bloodline, 
and deal with those things so that it doesn't hit the next three and four generations. Um, we also talked last week um, about how our own sin and our own habits literally open the door and give entryway for the enemy. We talked about personal sin, how, can, how personal sin can grow into habits. We talked about hatred, unforgiveness, which is a major one. So if there's any unforgiveness in your life, there's anybody who has done something to you, whether they are living or whether they are dead, that we want to release forgiveness because unforgiveness will hinder your deliverance greatly. Bitterness will hinder your deliverance greatly. And so we want to make sure that we're dealing with those things and we're walking in those for that forgiveness so that we can walk in our own freedom if there's anything that we need to be freed from. Okay, so today we're going to talk about a few other areas where demons or how demons enter. Um, and one of those areas, if you go ahead and grab in your, your Bibles, De uh, Deuteronomy 18, 9 through 12, one of the other gateways um, that we give access or place for the enemy is through occult involvement. And I know that sounds like a really big word and um, something that you said, oh, I don't deal with that or I'm not... Um, involved in that, but how easy, easily um, uh, we can we can even walk into that. So when we talk about the word occult, occult is something that is secret. Okay, occult is something that is concealed. So when you're dealing with things that are concealed, secret, hidden, or even covered, um, that's what we're speaking on. And as a result of occult, um, and the source of occult. Um, of the of occult's power is a hidden power, okay? It's a hidden power, so it's secretive, um, and it's very demonic, all right? So let's look at Deuteronomy 18, 9 through 12, and it says here in verse 9, when you enter the land the Lord your God has given you, do not learn to imitate the detestable ways of the nations there, let no one be found among you who sacrifices their son or daughter in the fire, who practice divination or sorcery, interprets omens, engages in witchcraft or casts spells, or who is a medium or spiritist who consults the dead. Anyone who does these things is detestable to the Lord. Because of these same detestable practices, the Lord your God will drive out those nations before you. You must be blameless before the Lord, your God. Okay, so the occult uh, involves things such as witchcraft and sorcery, divination, and a wide range of other just demonic activities um, that we're probably aware of. But these occult practices, I want us to get this, this this evening. These occult practices literally opens the door directly to evil spirits. It opens the door directly. So there's no going around. There's no going over. There's no going under. Like you directly give access to these evil spirits. And this, and just saying that particular part, it reminds me of a song that's very popular nowadays. And it's very catchy. When I first heard it, I'm saying, oh, I like this song. But there's a song that's called, um, I think it's called Leave the Door Open. You know, I can leave the door open. I can't sing it, but you know, it's a very popular song that's out and everyone is singing it and everything, but you have to be even careful about the types of songs that you sing. Um, because even when I think about and hear that, that particular song, um, I'm saying as a believer, we don't want to leave any doors open. So we have to even be careful about the words and the lyrics that we sing to songs because that song is saying, I'm going to leave the door open, but what are you leaving the door open to? I know he's speaking about you know, his significant other. But when we open up uh, and speak certain words, even, um, they can give access. They're saying, I'm leaving the door open for, for, for anything to come in. But as believers, we want to close those doors. We don't want those doors to be open and we don't want to give direct access to evil spirits in our lives. Okay, so the occult is one gateway that we allow um, evil spirits to enter. The next one is, is, a, is a big one even in the, in the church, but it's sexual sin. Sexual sin leaves the door open, okay? So um, Proverbs 5, 3 through 5. Let's look at that. Proverbs 5, 
Proverbs 5, 3 through 5. And it says here, for the lips of the adulterous woman drip honey and her speech is smoother than oil. But in the end, she is bitter as gal, sharp as a double-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her steps lead straight to the grave. Wow, 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 wow. All right, so sexual sin leaves the door open for evil spirits to come in. And these are some of the evil spirits that we see coming in through sexual sin. One of those spirits that we see coming in is that of bitterness, torment, and this is a big one, guys, even death, even death. All right. So I want us to look at, this, at a scripture really quick found in Luke um, 4, 33 through 36. Luke 4. Let's look at it real quick. Luke 4. I'm trying to pull it up on my phone. Luke 4. And we're going to look at 33 through 36 really quickly. And it says here in the synagogue, there was a man possessed by a demon of an impure so whenever you hear the word impure, you know that that is a sexual uh, form of sexual sin of an impure spirit. He cried out at the top of his, his voice, go away. What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, Jesus said sternly, come out of him. Then the demon threw the man down from before them all and came out with an inj without injuring him at all. All right, so we see here that this man, this demon-possessed man had a spirit uh, of an unclean demon, all right? Uh, a spirit of unclean demon. So we're gonna look at a few of these examples. And I'm gonna give you these scriptures rather quickly because we have a few more things that we need to cover. So write these scriptures down because these are sexual gateways that we give access or legal place for the enemy to come in. And I'm telling you, these spirits bring forth bitterness, they bring death, and they bring torment. These are the spirits that, that we allow to enter when we're involved in these sexual sins. Fornication, write this down. Fornication is a big one. And I might go to this scripture, um, but that's 1 Corinthians 6 and 18. 1 Corinthians 6 and 18. 1 Corinthians 6 and 18, it says here, flee from sexual immorality, all other sin a person commits outside of the body, but whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. Amen. All right. The next one is homosexuality and lesbianism. That's found in Leviticus 18, 22 through 24. And then pornography is a big one. Um, is found Matthew 5 and 28. Um, and then habitual masturbation. I don't have a scripture for that. Um, oral and anal sex. That's found in Leviticus 20 and 10. And then prostitution found in 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. And then molestation is found in Leviticus 20 and 11. Fantasy. We talked about that last week found in Matthew 5 and 28. Incest, found in Leviticus 20, verse 10. And then um, bestiality, found in Leviticus 20, 15 through 16. I'm telling you, people do some, some weird things, but these are all sexual sins that people are involved in. And it literally leaves the door open for evil spirits to enter. And when they come, they bring many things with them or lower demons with them in the area of bitterness, death, and torment. All right. So another um, uh, entryway or gateway um, is that through rejection, rejection. And that's found in 2 Samuel 6 and 16, rejection. Let's go ahead and turn there real quick. And I'm telling you, I have a lot of scriptures tonight. And so we're not going to be able to read all of them but I do want to read some of them and I'm gonna encourage you guys to go back in your time of study this week and actually read these particular scriptures that I was not able to get to tonight. So that's 2 Samuel 6 and 16. And it says, as the ark of the Lord was entering the city of David, Michael, daughter of Saul, watched from a window. And when she saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, 
She despised him in her heart. She despised him in her heart. So Michael was deeply rejected by her father and she became, as the scripture says, she became bitter and cynical and eventually she became barren. All right. So we see how even this particular spirit of feeling rejected by her father created and opened the door. It left the door open for bitterness. It left the door open even for her never to even carry a child. And so I'm not saying bearing this is always attached to a demonic gateway or door that we've left open. <laughs> it could just be simply something with, you know, our, our bodies. But in this scripture, we see that it was directly related to that of the spirit of rejection. All right. So um, people experience this a lot because I've, I've seen it through deliverance where we have felt rejected. And um, I'm going to call out a list of different areas where we can even leave the door open or experience the spirit of rejection in our lives. We can even be rejected in the womb. I've had parents, mothers who have come, you know, um, and had had deliverance um, for, their, for them and their child because they spoke words of rejection. Maybe the person was pregnant and said, you know, I don't wanna be pregnant. I don't want this baby. You know how you speak and it's maybe it was slipped up or you got pregnant and you didn't want it, right? And so maybe you love your child, but at the time, maybe you spoke those particular words. It opens the door for that child to experience rejection in the womb. This is deep y'all, all right? Um, also a, attempted abortion. So someone who may have attempted abortion, but maybe the abortion failed or you didn't not actually go through with it, it can even create a spirit of rejection for that child. So a child who feels like they are unwanted, um, especially the female child, um, it can leave the door open for rejection. Early childhood experience experiences, maybe the father wasn't present, maybe the mother wasn't present, um, it can create and leave the door open for the spirit of rejection to enter. Um, early childhood experience, family relational conflicts and breakdowns. We experience a lot of dysfunction in the family where there is lots of conflict and breakdown within the family um, where you grew up. It can open the door for the spirit of rejection. Emotional coldness or separation. Um, Maybe there's a, a boyfriend that was emotionally cold towards you. It can open the door, leave the door open to the spirit of rejection. Unfavorable uh, comparisons, right? Um, even as we compare on the internet or compare our lives to other people and other things, it can leave the door open to the spirit of rejection. I'm telling you, this is deep, guys. Divorce and broken relationships, right? Divorce can leave the door open to the spirit of rejection. And then lastly is school related uh, experiences. You know how kids are, kids are cruel. Teachers can be even cruel um, and it can leave the door open to the spirit of rejection. All right, so that's a big one. And that's one that we see quite often as we're doing deliverance um, is rejection. All right, the next one is controlling relationships. Controlling relationships. Maybe you found yourself at one point or another in a controlling relationship. And the scripture for that is 1 Samuel chapter 20, verses 30 through 33. I'm not gonna read that, but I want you to write it down. Um, but controlling or abusive relationships um, can really, guys, it can really impact, uh, it can really impact you and it literally leaves the door open for, for, for certain spirits or controlling spirits to enter in. Um, if we recall in scripture, Saul was controlled, um, Saul controlled his, his entire family, right? Um, Jezebel controlled her marriage. And not only did Jezebel control her marriage, oftentimes you see, you hear people say, you know, she has a Jezebel spirit. That's a spirit that is a controlling spirit. And it's a spirit that uh, with Jezebel, she controlled her marriage, but she also controlled a nation. All right. And then control can bring rejection. This is what it, we, we leave the door open to when we are in relationships or have experiences with a controlling person or situation. Um, it can leave the door open 
and bring in the spirit of rejection. It can bring in the spirit of trauma and even the spirit of terror. You ever seen people that are just terrified because they have been in such a controlling relationship that there is lots of fear and lots of trauma that's there. But it can also leave the door open to physical, verbal, and emotional abuse. Um, and so those particular experiences can create wounds. I know that you've heard um, people say um, that, that this person has wounded me. And this is a real term in regards to deliverance, in regards to spiritual or inner healing. Um, because when you think about wounds, wounds, you may have a wound on your arm and a wound um, is something that is on the outside, but a wound is something that is done by another person. So oftentimes or done by another thing. So oftentimes if you are abused or you're hit, it will leave a wound. I mean, you, ne you don't necessarily wound yourself, right? If you bump into the edge of a table, right? The table did it. I mean, you didn't see it, but the table is what left the bruise or left the wounding. So when you think about wounds, it's often related to what an individual or a group of people or uh, uh, something has done to you and it has left a wound. So when you see a wound, a wound cannot um, just be left alone. A wound also has to be cared for, has to be tended for so that proper healing can take place. Now, if you leave a wound and you let it be, it will heal, but oftentimes it will leave a mark, right? It will leave something there. But if you tend to it, take care of it, right? It will heal properly. And so oftentimes we are wounded as children, we are wounded in relationships and things of that sort, and we never deal with it. So if we don't deal with it, what happens? It just is it's an open wound. And we go through our lives with these open wounds in dif different areas of our lives. And as we go through our lives with these different wounds that have been left untreated or undealt with, um, what happens with open flesh? Just in the natural, it attracts what? Maggots, it attracts gnats, it attracts all sorts of things, right? Because it's left open and undealt with. I'm going somewhere with this because if we are wounded by an individual, whether it's through a relationship, a controlling relationship, an abusive relationship, whether we've been rejected by a father, rejected by a mother, whether we have been rejected in, in, in school or whatever it is, um, and, and we have all of these open doors, right? We have all of these wounds that we have in our lives. If it's left untreated and we don't get the proper healing, inner healing, that's when you hear the word inner healing. If we don't get the proper inner healing, we release forgiveness and we um, deal with those particular things, right? Um, the proper way, right? Not out of sight, out of mind. People will say that all the time. If somebody's out of sight, out of mind, then it, I'm healed. Over time never heals wounds. I want y'all to write this down. Time never heals wounds. We think that, but it doesn't, all right? Time doesn't heal all things, okay? So, so you know, if it just creates space um, between the incident and where you are now, but it doesn't mean that it's brought forth healing. So sometimes you'll hear people say that, I just need some time. I just need time to heal. I just need time to heal. But time does not heal. It just creates a space. And with that space, it creates an illusion that we think that we're healed. But the way that you know that you're properly healed from a situation or a difficult thing that you've had to deal with, or someone has wounded you, someone has hurt you, someone has brought trauma to your life, um, in some sort of way, the way that you know that you're healed is that when you speak of those things or those matters are brought back up in whatever situation, whether it's been five years, two years, 10 years um, from a distance of when it has happened, um, the way that you know that you are properly healed is that you don't experience fresh emotion when that situation is brought back up maybe in counseling, or maybe you're just reflecting on it. And those same emotions don't rise back up in you. It doesn't feel fresh anymore. So for instance, if someone has lost a loved one or someone has um, gone through something great and it's been five years, a five-year span, if you start talking about 
a certain thing or start talking about that person that they lost, immediately tears begin to flow. Amen. And so that is indication that there's a, a particular part in that person's life, an area where this wound has not healed and it has not healed properly. Okay. And so we know that either there needs to be inner healing and in some cases, there needs to be deliverance. Because remember, let's go back to the wound. When that wound is left unattended and just time has healed the wound, right? Which that is not the case. Um, then, you know, it attracts the maggots. It attracts the flies. And what are those things in the spirit? That's demonic activity, okay? So when we left something unattended for a while, it attracts demonic activity in our lives. It leaves the womb open or leaves the door open for activity to come in. And so you may find yourself saying, well, I was abused. I'm the victim, right? But yes, you are the victim. In most cases, you are the victim. But the victim, as we come into this knowledge, we have 100% responsibility for our, for, for, our, for our healing in this particular area. I mean, God is the one that heals, right? But we have to put our faith in him, right? In order to, in order to really see this, um, this healing take place. So we gotta take some responsibility um, in this matter because that person who has wounded you might be dead and gone, but you, you're still living with the effects of it and the sin of it and the demonic activity in your life and you're the one dealing with it. So we have to take some ownership and say, you know what? I forgive them. And we're gonna, I'm gonna take you through some steps later, uh, probably next week about how to even walk yourself through um, some, some deliverance in these particular areas. But I wanted to bring these things to light. We still did not get to everything we needed to get to today, um, but there's a lot of different things that we're gonna touch on and doors um, that we're gonna look at. Uh, but I guess I can give you some scripture just to go ahead and meditate on this week. But another door that we open up our lives to is that of trauma, accident, and grief. And I just hit on grief a little bit, but that's found in 2 Timothy 1 and 7. And we'll hit on that a little bit next week. And then we open the door to ungodly beliefs, ungodly beliefs. That's an open door that we leave open. That's found in John 8 and 44. And then curses, curses, um, and, and when I say curses, I'm not just saying someone has put a curse on you, but sometimes we can even um, speak word curses over our lives, right? Things that we speak um, over our lives, self-cursing, um, and that's found in Lamentations 3, 64 through 66. And then the last one that we're going to talk about, and I'll go in more details next week, but transference is an uh, open door. And that's found in 2 Corinthians 11 and 4, right? And we can see this transference happening through movies, books, entertainment, games, right? There's a full list of different things where basically it brings forth lust, violence, occult, all of these things through the means of mass media and alcohol, drugs. So these are like transference spirits where if we do certain things or we watch certain things or we open up the gates of our eyes and our ears, that's why we have to be very mindful about what we watch, what we listen to, because there is a transference spirit that as we're watching it, we said, oh, I'm not scared of this. This doesn't bother me. I can watch this. I can do this, you know, and it's, you think it doesn't bother you, but there is a gateway. You're opening up the gate of your eyes. You're opening up the gate of your ears and you're giving permission or you're giving a place for those spirits to come in. Whoo, y'all, this is heavy and this is so real. This is real. And, um, and, and I just want to encourage us at Emmanuel that we do not, I want y'all to repeat after me. We do not leave the door open that we do not leave the door open. All right. I know that song says leave the door open y'all, but I'm telling you, don't leave these doors open. And if you found yourself in a place where you have left the door open, 
right? Write those things down. If Holy Spirit is bringing to your attention as I was calling these things out, where you're saying there might be a door or I see this kind of activity in my life, write those things down because next Saturday, we're gonna be doing a deliverance. It's gonna be over social media, but God is everywhere. He's omnipresent. And you can get your deliverance um, even through a screen, amen? And so it, it, it just requires faith. Um, and so we're gonna do a deliverance. So write those things down. If there's anything Holy Spirit is revealing to you and showing you where the enemy is hiding and where maybe you've left a door, we're gonna close those doors. Um, so I'm gonna do a little bit of teaching next Saturday and then we're gonna do some deliverance. Um, and so I'm so excited about that. And then I'm gonna give you the tools that you need to be able to uh, do deliverance yourself, right? Um, at home. Um, by yourself. And so I'm excited about that. And I pray that you guys have received um, a little bit more uh, just information in this area. Um, and just know this is not to scare you, but this is to inform you, right? Because the enemy likes to play these games and he likes to do these things and he thinks that he's, he's hiding, but um, we've, we've, we've unveiled it, right? And so we're coming into that knowing, into that understanding, but also we're coming into the understanding that we have an apostolic anointing. We walk in the authority of Jesus, of God, right? And so he said, those that believe can cast out demons, right? He didn't just say that just to say that, but he said that so that we will walk in this authority, right? And that we would live in a way of freedom, full freedom, Amen. And so my prayer is that you were blessed tonight. I just want to say a prayer covering over you guys. So Father God, all those who are watching today, as we have received this word today, Father God, I come against fear. I come against anything that would try to um, be sparked in their life, in their heart, Lord God. But I thank you that they are rising up in their boldness. They're rising up in their apostolic anointing. They're rising up in apostolic ministry. And I thank you, Father God, that you are using them to do what your word says that we are able to do. You said those that believe shall be able to cast out demons right? And so, Father, I thank you, Lord God, that we are, our eyes are open, that we're walking in this way, and that we're walking in this authority. I pray for covering, blessing over each and every person in their family. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Amen. Well, you guys, I enjoyed this time with you guys this evening. Thank you for tuning in. And again, if you missed the other videos, go back in the last few weeks, three weeks that we've been doing this series, go back and catch up because we're just going deeper and deeper as the weeks progress. You all have a blessed rest of your Tuesday and we'll see you guys this Saturday for prayer. Amen. And don't forget, we are starting our seven day fast of consecration on um, next Sunday, Sunday, August the 1st. And so check your reminds for information. Also check the website at www.elotw.com and you can go there and find all the information concerning the fast. And so we want to make sure that everybody's involved in this fast and um, and receiving what they need to receive in this week and um, be prepared for deliverance on the following Saturday, which is August the 6th, we're gonna be doing a corporate, uh, corporate deliverance. Um, and so I'm excited. So you guys enjoy your night and we'll see you all next week. Bye-bye.